Hi everyone, let me show you how to create a cool and interactive PowerPoint presentation like this one. Cool, right? Let's check it out together step by step how to recreate this cool presentation. Here I am in the desktop version of Microsoft PowerPoint. Let's click on blank presentation. I will start completely from scratch. Let me remove these two text boxes. And now let me start to apply four shapes. Let's go on insert, then shapes, and I'm going to take this one. So if you keep press it, control, the control key, you are going to draw a perfect square. But in this case, I want to have a rectangle. It's, I would say it's fine. Maybe I can make it a little bit small. And there we go. Now, let me select a color that I want to use. Let me go on shape fill. And here I'm going to select let's say this this color okay now i have the first shape i'm going to copy and paste it copy and paste and copy and paste it so i have now four shapes let me place it here just to have the same distance here i would say that i can make it closer this the last one to the, the other three and now i have four shapes just added now here you can add whatever you want. I want to follow the presentation that I made the demo. So then I'm going to have these four shapes and then I'm going to add four images. Feel free to add whatever you want and prefer. This approach, it works in a very flexible way. It means that you can add all resources that you want. Now I'm going to reuse from the previous presentation this content the four icons with the text. I'm going to copy and now I'm going to paste this in my four shapes. It's perfect, it looks nice, it, it's well placed, so I can now start to create other connections with these shapes. Before to move to the next step, it's really important now for this slide to define the transition morph because I'm going to copy this slide and paste it for the next, the next ones. Now, let me copy this one and paste it, this four times, because I want to create four different effects. The shape has to change. Now, in this second slide, I can select this, keep pressed CTRL key, I'm able now to make this shape a little bit bigger, then I can change the position of the text, the icon, it will be placed here, and then I'm going to do the same with the second one. So I'm going to select this other shape, I'm going to keep press it, CTRL key, and then I'm going to move the text in the left corner of this shape, and then the icon as well. Same thing for Viva Learning. So again, keeping pressed CTRL, I'm able to change the sides of this shape. Let me place the text on the left, icon on the right. And then let's go with the last one. The text always on the left. And the icon on the right. So this is my presentation about Microsoft Viva. Viva has four models, so I'm going to use four shapes. You can use this approach if you have an agenda in your presentation and you want to jump from a topic to another. It's very, very nice. Now, to complete these four slides, I need some text here inside. Instead of re-adding a text box, I'm going to reuse something that I already made and let me go here now. I'm going to use this one, Viva Topics, Viva Insights. Okay, now for the second one, 
I'm going to use this Viva Topics text. Let me place it better. Viva Learning. Again, copy and paste. Let me position better. And finally, the last one, which is Viva Connections. Okay, I place it now the text for Viva Connections as well. I have Viva Learning, Viva Topics, and Viva Insights. Last thing to do is to recreate four other slides to jump on the specific topic and elaborate my discussion on it. So I'm going to copy, to copy this slide. And now what I can do here is remove all these other shapes. I don't need these shapes no more. Now I'm going to change the form of this shape let me the text i'm going to remove this text then i'm going to position this a little bit on top of my page now let me move the text with the icon here i'm going to make this thing a little bit smaller and here we go and now here i can place my content down below now I'm going to do the same for the slide three. It's important that you copy and paste the previous slide so you have the same object name because the morph transition works well with the name, the, the exact name of an object. If you change the name of this shape, for example, you will lose the transition. Okay, now let me change the sides here of this one. I'm going to replace and position better this thing and then I can remove this other one. Now I show you what I was talking about. If I go on arrange, there is the selection pane. Selecting this shape, I can see the name of this object, which is rectangle four. Morph transition, it's absolutely powerful it's my favorite transition in powerpoint but it works if you maintain the same name for every object across slides now let me go forward with this other one for i can remove this these objects to remove this other one and then this shape let me remove immediately this text now let me reposition this shape on top of this slide. Let me select these two objects. I'm going to place it in the middle of this shape. And here we go. Now, the last one, which is Viva Connections. Okay, I removed the unnecessary shapes. I'm going to position this on top. This guy with this other will be added in the center. Okay, now I can resize the shape. It's smaller and now I have completed my job. Of course, here I can produce additional slides, but for the demonstration, it's enough. So I have for every slide now the transition morph already set up because I have done this for the first slide and then I'm just copy and paste the existing resources. So in this way, I can reuse what I have already set up. Now let's start to add action to every shape. So what I'm going to do here is that when I go over this shape, I want to move to another slide because the result should be this one. The shape would change the, the sides. So in this way, I have visually the effect 
that I'm going to highlight this content in this shape. So to do that, let me select this shape, then insert, and you will find in the command bar action. Here there is the tab mouse over, and here you have to select hyperlink to, you can set next slide or previous slide, my suggestion is to define specifically the slide where you want to jump. So in this way, if you add or remove slides, you are sure that this action will target always the exact number of the slide that you define it. Let me set on OK. And now I have set up this first thing. I have to go forward by doing action again, mouse over, I want to jump in this case to the slide number three because I want to highlight the second topic. Okay, let's go with the third one. Action, hyperlink, slide. And this one, it is the four. Okay, okay. Now let's do the same for the last one. Mouse over, hyperlink. It is not the next slide, but it is the specific slide and it is the slide number five. Okay, now I selected five. Okay, so now I have to do the same for all other slide because when I go over this shape, I am in the slide number two. And if I change the focus of my mouse on another shape, this will not change. In fact, if I go in this shape, of the slide number two, I can see that the action is not properly set up. So I have to do the same by selecting again the slide number three for this shape. So in this way, I'm, it doesn't matter where I am, I will ha always have the effect when I go over the shape, this will be bigger and highlighted. So I don't want to bother you with this configuration, I will do it now for all this shape, this change. I added now every action for every shape for all other slides. As you can see here, I'm selecting all shapes and I have set up the mouse over for every shape for all these slides. Now, another thing that I would like to change selecting all the slides is in transition, the duration, it's two seconds it's too slow, I need, I need to speed up this transition, it would be 75, okay, milliseconds. Now, I can play this presentation and let's see how it looks like. But before to do it again, I'm going to set in the slideshow, I'm going to change the setup because I want to open this in the window, I want to run this presentation in this window. Let me press N5 and now if I go over this shape I can see that the first one is highlighted, the same thing for the second one. I am now on the slide 4 and in fact the shape is highlighted. If I go forward with Viva Connections the fourth shape is highlighted again. I can go back. So it's pretty cool and powerful this way to highlight content it's very interactive and nice to see. Now, if you want to jump in the moment when a shape is highlighted, for example, if you want to navigate and jump to a specific slide, all you need to do is place something that gives you the trigger for this mechanism. And in this case, I'm going to add another shape. It is, I want to recreate a classic button very, very simple and easy. I will keep exactly this, this, uh, this color, it's fine. And then here inside I can just type open, it's fine. And here now I can, going on the insert preview, I can set the action. So when I click on this shape, I'm going to open the slide number six. Let's click on OK and this is done. Now I can do the same for all other slides. In this other case, I want to use the same button 
And if you use the same button, if you copy and paste the same button, it will have the same name for every slide. And in this way, Morph will work fine. So you will see the button moving with the transition moving and changing the position for every shape. Now here I want to change, clicking on shape format, I want to change the shape fill color and I'm going to use the uh, hydropper. Now I have this cursor, um, I will keep this button because I have highlighted my uh, cursor of the mouse and it's now difficult with the hydropper takes the, the right color. So I will keep it as this. Then I'm going to copy again this, this button and I'm going to paste it in this R1. And for the last case, I want to jump in the last topic. Now I have to fix the link because previously I set up another slide and for the topic two is different. I want to go on the slide seven. Let me select and confirm with OK. Now the text is highlighted. It means that I took the, I added the, the hyperlink on the text. I don't really want to do that, but I want to assign the action on the shape. So I'm going to reselect the shape again, insert, and then action. And the hyperlink is properly assigned on the, on the slide six. Now let's select again this button. Uh, it's not necessary because I already have done this. Let me select the insert action. And in this case, I want to jump on the slide seven. No, it's the eight. Let me check again this one because I think it's wrong. Action, hyperlink, in fact, it's wrong. It is the slide seven. Voila, okay. And finally, in the last button, what I have here, it is always this action. It is not the URL, but is slide. And it is this last one, slide nine. Okay. So let me start again this presentation. Uh, let's see if everything works as expected. I am now on the first shape, the second one. As you can see, I'm using the same button with the same name and you have this effect that the button seems moving across highlighted shapes. It's pretty nice. Now, if I click on the button, I jump directly on this specific slide that expand this topic with description and more content. All right, we have seen how to create interactive navigation in PowerPoint. Let me know what do you think in the comment down below about this, this video. I am very curious. I hope to see you next time. Bye.